Hey, this is Chris, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a level in Cuboid Clash using Tiled. So first things first, I'm here at cadryden.com, and there's also a reference page that I've made uh, for making levels. It's over here on the right, under Tutorials, using Tiled with Cuboid Clash. And so I have an explanation of all the different types of tiles that are required, the different layers, all that stuff that you would need. Um, so what we actually need now is over on the downloads page, uh, we're going to need the latest build of the game, the editor, and this tile set image. We're going to be using that for our graphics. So I've already downloaded all of those things, uh, put them in a tutorial folder on my desktop. Got the game, the editor, and the tiles. So, let's see if we go ahead and go in here and double click this, then we're going to open up the editor. So you may have to readjust um, you know, some of these panes here so it all looks nice. And something else I want to check real quick, make sure our preferences are set up correctly, we're embedding images and embedding images and tiles. So all that's going to do is make sure that the all of our graphics are in the actual map folder file itself. So let's go ahead open one of our maps. You can see here that I'm in um, on the desktop tutorial QA Clash content maps and the best way to start off making a map is to take one of these base maps and uh, make a copy from that. So we'll open up this two player one and we're gonna go save as or we'll call it uh, tutorial.tmx. Save that, and we'll go ahead, go back to our game. Do a clash bin. So we'll open that up, and we'll see level select tutorial.tmx, and there we go. <gasps> so that looks pretty good. Looks like what we had in the editor. Okay. And back in the editor now, let's see if we can figure out what all of these layers are. So, you can have more than these, but you can't have less. These are the required ones for any map to even load into the game. Um, so, let's have a little bit of a better look at this thing. So, the collision tiles here is really where the bulk of your level making is going to happen, especially at the beginning. Um, this is all the geometry for the game. Um, you have these green squares, which are just normal collision tiles. Players can't go through them. The yellow tiles are bouncing, and these little spike-looking tiles will kill the player. So you can also set up some properties on these. If you go into Tile Set Manager, Collision Tile Set, edit that. Um, you can see Tile 0, the square one, it's got nothing because it's just the basic tile. Um, the type on this bounce tile, bounce tile, and velocity is negative 850. So in this game, um, the coordinate system is screen coordinates. So that means that positive y is down, negative y is up. Uh, positive x is to the right and negative x is to the left. So velocity of negative 850 means uh, it's going to bounce the player up at a velocity of 850 pixels per second. Um, similarly for the kill tile, uh, respawn is going to be at this position in tile units. So five tiles to the right, ten tiles down, this could also be pixel, um, which would be 5 pixels to the right, 10 pixels down. Um, and when the player respawns, he'll be facing to the right. So that could be right or left. And one thing to note here is that um, this affects all of these tiles. So if you wanted another set of kill tiles that you know, um, respawn the player someplace else, you would have to make a new image, Add the image through here and um, cr 
create a new tile. So you probably duplicate the tile, change its image, and um, change out the parameters that you want to change. So probably the respawn. Um, for an example of that, you can open up uh, caves.tmx. Uh, I've done that a lot there. Uh, so you can take a look at that if you want to see more. Um, so we have also here the exit tiles, which basically is just for the end of the game. Uh, when one player touches them, he wins, the other player loses. And so that creates the uh, end of level sequence where the try again menu pops up. Now we have the cameras here, which, so this is a um, object layer, not a tile layer like some of the others that we saw. So this guy, when you select one of these layers, you have these bottom tools available instead of the top one. So if we go to the move one, right click it, you can see these properties show up. So the width and height are kind of important. They are actually kind of a window into the game world itself. So the camera is viewing a 800 by 300 uh, rectangle of the world, so you can actually see how much of the game world it's going to be looking at. Um, the display view is where that window is put <clears throat> in the actual uh, Pi game window that pops up. So our window is 800 by 600 pixels, so this camera 1 is going to be at the top left, 0, 0, and it's going to take up the top half of the screen, 800 by 300. Um, these numbers don't have to match with the width and height um, here, so the the camera will uh, transform however it needs to in order to fit the whole um, view into the window that you're setting for it. Um, the order also is if you have cameras overlapping um, in the display view this will tell you which one should be put on top of the other. The target, player one, is going to be centered. And then the UI files. Oh, fuck me, man. It's halfway on there. God damn it. Cancel. And we have the camera object layer. Not a tile layer like the other two. Um, so, these are the two camera objects we have. And if we right click, we can see their properties. So, first off, width and height are 800 by 300. That's how much of the world the camera is viewing at any given point. So, you can see in the editor how much that actually is. Um, the display view is where in the window exactly the, uh, the output is going to be displayed. So, 0, 0 is the top left, and it's going to be 800 pixels wide, 300 high. Um, so, because our window is 800 by 600, that's going to be the top half of the screen. Um, the order here is for when you have multiple cameras that are going to be on top of each other, their display views. Um, that's going to tell you which one to put on top of the other. Um, the target is player one, so that means uh, this camera is going to try and stay centered on the object called player one as much as it can. And the UI file down here is a relative file path from this map to this player one UI.xml. And that file actually defines the um, attack meter that the player has. So you can right click camera two and see how it's set up similarly and differently. Um, camera collision is another tile layer, which we just have one tile for, and that's a specific collision layer for cameras. So that means if the camera is moving to the right here, it's going to run into it, and it's not going to keep going anywhere. It's going to get stuck there. Um, which is good if you want to put the camera in a specific place, or uh, hide secret areas from the player. Um, that's how it can be useful. Um, Collision groups. This is just an organizational kind of thing. Um, you don't really need to worry about it for this specific game, um, unless you're going to be adding more players in, like three or four players. 
then you might have to deal with it. But not for now. And finally, last object group is the player group. Uh, so there's not really much here. Um, the width and height don't matter. Um, it's defined in the game itself that they're going to be 30 wide by 94 high. Um, so I've just set them here to those same numbers so you can see uh, the correct bounding box for them. Um, closing group, they're going to be in the player group, don't worry about that. And this is going to be player 1, so it's going to be hooked up to controller 1. And you can see in player 2, that's going to be number 2, and it hooks up to player number 2. Now, before we start actually messing around with the level itself, let's look at one more thing. Go into property, map, then properties, and we have these. We have background, which is the background image, background color, gravity, music, and UI files. They're all blank, um, because they've all been defaulted for this map. Um, but let's go ahead and change some of those around a little bit. Background color, we'll make this a bluish color. Uh, 100, 150, 255. Should be good. Uh, gravity, we'll leave that. Music, actually no. Let's also add a background file. So all the paths, the file paths uh, from the editor are all going to be relative to the map itself. So if we go back to Explorer, um, you can go into the game folder, content, maps. So all our file paths are going to be relative from here. So if we go up one, and then into graphics, backgrounds, we have, we'll do grid64.png. So let's see if we can manage that back in the editor. So we went up one, then down into graphics, background, we had grid 64.png. Okay. So one other fun little thing to note um, is that sometimes um, the editor doesn't realize you've changed something, especially if it's in the properties. So sometimes you have to just delete um, you know, a blank tile, so you don't really do anything for it to realize you've changed something, and then save it. So we've done that, um, and let's go ahead, go back to the game, restart, reload it, and there we go. It's blue, and we have our grid on it. But that's kind of messes with uh, the blue of our player, so let's go ahead and change that back. So we'll come back in here, properties, we'll leave the grid, uh, but we'll just change this to a nice lighter gray so you can still see the grid on it. Alright, so I think that's where we'll end for now, done with all of the explaining, and in the next tutorial I'll walk you through how to actually edit the level and lay down some graphics. So stay tuned until then.